Hey everyone, James with TFB TV, hanging out with Brandon Herrera way too much because yet again we have another AK review and yet again it's another AK from Zostava. But I'm okay with that. Threat. This is the new Zostava ZPAP 85 Tactical. New. I should have made air quotes. It's not really a new gun. This is just basically an M85. An M85 is, of course, like a Krinkov style 223 Yugoslavian or Serbian AK. Instead of a 16 inch barrel, it's got a 10 inch barrel. This gun's new in a couple of ways. You guys remember Shot Show 2019? I went and visited the guys at Zastava. They said, look, man, we are so sick and effing tired of importing our sporterized guns. Remember, they have to import these AKs in 922R compliant condition. So that usually means like single stack magwells and rifle stocks like sporter stocks. Otherwise they can't import them. And so what they would do previously is they would import them. That importer would then perform the conversion. And in the past, and I mentioned this when I did the ZPAP, the Z70, review. In the past, they were using an importer who was not doing that great of a job with the conversions. So Zostava said, you know what, F it. We want to protect our reputation. That's very important to us. So we're going to set up shop in Illinois. We're going to import the guns to Illinois. We're going to do the conversions ourselves. So that way everybody knows that they're going to be getting a top tier conversion of a top tier AK rifle. So that's a new development just in the past year or two and they're rolling out new models periodically. And by new models, again, really what they're bringing is modernized versions of rifles that they've already been making now for decades. And I embrace that because they make fantastic AKs. But the M85 Tactical is also new because as they showed us at SHOT Show 2020, they're going to be offering the M85 or the Z85 in this tactical configuration. I had a look at it at SHOT 2020, went to the Zostava booth, saw those boys, check that out. The ZPAP 85 in 5.56 now. Uh, we bring them in in their standard configuration, much like what you would see up here. Uh, however, these guys do have the 1.5 millimeter bulge trunnion receivers, chrome line barrels, which we know everybody's been asking for. Uh, we've also done a couple of configurations of this with the brace, uh, buffer tube adapter, SBA3 brace, top rail, quad rail, CNC Warrior night break. Really trick these guys out to give you something interesting to play around with. So as you can see, they're pretty amped about this. It's the M85, it's got a chrome line barrel, it's crink style, it's 223, so extremely soft shooting, but they added some features. You've got the CNC Warrior brake, this big chunky son of a bitch. We're gonna talk about this in just a second. It also comes with a quad rail handguard specifically designed for Yugo guns or Serbian guns because they've got a different size handguard than other AKs. And this one's, it seems pretty nice. It's aluminum, it's Zostava marked. I'm sure they don't make it. They probably have it contracted out. But it's got three QD sling sockets on each side, which is cool. And you've got a decent bit of rail. It seems to be relatively sturdy, albeit a little bit chunky. It also has a UTG AFG angled foregrip right here, which is actually pretty good. UTG is not associated with being the best gear, but I know that in recent history, they've been stepping up their game a little bit with like the UTG Pro line. So it's still economically priced, but I think the quality is better. I'm still a bit of a snob about it. Maybe that gives us a clue for all I know. Maybe this is a UTG handguard as well, but I can't say that for sure. The tactical model also has a sight rail on top of the top cover. We ran this with an EOTech all day yesterday and it seemed to hold zero. It seems to be relatively sturdy. And finally, the last feature that you're getting on the tactical model versus a standard model is you've got a buffer tube adapter with an SB tactical brace. This is a great addition. And in fact, I think the single most important addition, I could take or leave the handguard, take or leave the muzzle device. Really what's cool about this is now you can add an AR stock. So if you want to SBR it, you can SBR it with your AR stock, or you can keep the brace on there and this thing worked just fine. 
as an arm brace. Definitely not a stock. So those are the differences, and we're gonna talk about whether or not you should buy this versus like the standard M85 or Z85 towards the end of the video when we talk about the pros and the cons. Let's get a little bit deeper into the specs. 10 inches for the barrel, that's just about right. In fact, I think that's accepted as more or less the minimum possible length that you can have if you're shooting 5.56 five, or 223. To put things into context, these hicks that shoot with like seven and a half inch barrels, so absurd. <laughs> you're talking about 17,000 PSI at the muzzle whenever you shoot from a seven and a half inch gun. When you go to 10 inch, you're looking at about 12,000 PSI. So there's a lot less pressure at the muzzle end. Also 10 inches is the minimum barrel length you need to accelerate M855 at 2,500 feet per second. Most circles consider 2,500 feet per second to be the minimum, so with 10 inches, you get that. Also think about it this way, SOCOM uses the Mark 18. The Mark 18 is what? A 10.3 inch barrel AR slash M4. Historically an issue with 223 AKs has been unreliable feeding. I don't know if that's like a magazine curvature issue. I don't know if it's a gun issue. I don't know if AKs, the AK pattern rifle is just allergic to glorious American 223 slash 556, which was invented specifically for the M16, I don't know. It's normally pretty unreliable. How was it at the range for us? Settle down, we'll get there. So the M85, functionally identical to the M92. The M92 is just the 7.6239 Krinkov 10 inch barrel AK. I have an M92, I absolutely love it. But one thing that kind of sucks about the M92, for some reason the M70 and the M92, which are 7.62 by 39 guns, they're not chrome lined. The barrels aren't chrome lined. Nobody knows why. Everybody's got a theory, and I know you guys are gonna post your theories in the comments. Go ask Mishiko. Go to Mishiko's channel. He's like the AK dude. He is a living encyclopedia of AK knowledge. Ask him why. He says he doesn't know. To add to the mystery, the M85 has a chrome lined barrel, and it's cold hammer forged, like most AK barrels, so you're gonna get a piss load of durability out of this thing with a cold hammer forged barrel and the chrome lining. So they chrome line their 223 5.56 barrels, but they don't chrome line the 7.6239 barrels. I don't know. Another thing that's kind of cool about the M85 is it also uses a one and a half millimeter thick receiver. That is compared to the one millimeter receiver that you see in most AKs. So this one's gonna be a little bit more rigid and you're probably gonna get better accuracy out of the M85 versus another 223 AK. Interestingly, with all this shit on here, this gun weighs 7.7 .7 pounds. That is not light, and, it, and you certainly feel it. It is heavy. The mags are heavy too. These steel mags that came with the gun, 0.7 pounds, almost 0.8 pounds. So pretty chunky package altogether. My M92 that I have personally, it doesn't have an aluminum handguard. It's got a polymer handguard, but with a polymer handguard, the four piece break and a triangle folder that I had custom fitted, I'm looking at 6.6 .6 pounds. So it's about a pound lighter than this big old hog. My cat, Krinkov, Siamese, he weighs 13 pounds. So you're still doing better carrying this than you are carrying my morbidly obese Siamese cat. You could bring the weight down by maybe changing out the handguards, getting rid of the AFG, maybe getting a lighter break, which we're gonna talk about in a second, and maybe switching to polymer magazines. But man, the catch with polymer magazines, like you'd need to get Bulgarian Circle Tens, and those things are gonna be like 60 or $70 each. They're gonna be awesome. They're gonna be lighter, but they're gonna be pricey. These steel mags are definitely cheaper, but they weigh a lot. Let's talk about the insides of this thing. Fit and finish was outstanding, just like the M70 or the Z70 or whatever they're calling it nowadays. The one that I reviewed previously, that Zostava was excellent. Extraordinary fit and finish. You've got matching serial numbers on some of the components that are like hand etched on there, which I think is cool. It just feels like a quality AK. Zostava has done such a good job bringing these in, importing them, doing the conversions correctly, and showing people what they can really do. If you have a look at the bolt, the bolt carrier group, the piston, and by the way, Zostava says that they're made out of nickel chrome moly, which should be resistant to rust. I don't know. Um, I, I can't opine intelligently about that. I know a little bit about metal, a little bit, just enough to be dangerous, but I'm not a metallurgist 
by any stretch of the imagination, so I can't even verify their claims. But with my M92, I would periodically get some rust on it. I put some Brownells, I talked about this in a couple of videos. I, I did Brownells Alumahide and then baked it on and I haven't had problems since. Neat little thing on the safety catch, you've got the bolt hold open so you can roll your bolt back and then lock your charging handle into your safety if you need to keep the bolt open. But once you turn the safety off, it slams shut. So it doesn't really get you much. I guess maybe if you have a hard time reloading these for some reason, or if you need to just show that it's cold for the range, I guess that's a nice feature to have, but not really critical. They did a good job with the magazine wells. Mags go in easily, they come out easily, to the extent that an AK mag insertion is easy. These, as far as AKs go, were not bad. The trigger's fantastic. It was like four and a half pounds. You got like the coiled double wire in there. So the trigger's really good. SB Tactical Brace worked pretty well. It's a little sticky, but not anything bad or uncommon. As far as disassembly and reassembly goes, this is the easiest AK I've ever taken apart and put back together. And it isn't because the tolerances are, are loose or anything. It just, it fit together very well. All the components just fit together, kind of snapped in place. Very easy to assemble, disassemble, and I do like the hinge top cover. Some people don't, I tend to like it. Now let's talk about shooting impressions. Holy moly, guys, we were really impressed. I went out there with Ryan, my camera dude, who's a great shooter, and we went to town on this thing. I mean, we probably put near a half case of ammo through it, just rapid fire. That was fun, because this gun, shoots extremely flat and I'm talking in terms of recoil it was this was fun to shoot I mean it was fun because you knew you were sending shit down range you could almost feel the concussion from this muzzle brake coming back at you if you were filming or if you were standing beside the guy shooting it totally sucked for you but as long as you're on this side of the gun pretty rad this thing ran like a freaking buzzsaw slash sewing machine. It was awesome. The sights are nothing to write home about. They're just typical AK sights, but like with the M92, you've got a little flip up in the rear. So you got two notches to choose from in the rear and you got a little flip up in the front. You've got the post or you've got like a big dot. So you've got options, but it's a little bit like, do you want a grilled cheese sandwich or do you want tomato soup? You know, it's neither of them are really that great, but hey, at least you got a choice. And again, I cannot emphasize enough how much fun we had shooting this thing. I mean, at 50 yards, we were making regular hits on a silhouette target very easily from standing prone, kneeling, you name it. We could not get enough of this gun. We talked to each other. And of course, as you know, uh, I don't clean these guns before I shoot them. I don't lube them or anything. Ran flawlessly. As I mentioned, that was a concern that I had because 223 AKs tend to be unreliable. It ran absolutely flawlessly without any cleaning. It already came pretty oiled up from the factory, but I, I don't even think it needed that. It ran perfectly. It shot very flat, even though it was chucking brass. So I wouldn't say it was over gassed, but you know, doesn't matter between how light this caliber is, how light recoiling it is, and between this brake, it was really easy to shoot, really fun, and it stayed level. You knew it was gonna be reliable because you were watching it, the brass wasn't just meh, meh, dribbling out. I mean, it was So very impressive ejection pattern, notwithstanding the fact that it was a very light recoiling gun. What's my ultimate conclusion on this gun? Pretty much the same as the M70, and that is you're going to have to make the decision yourself. Nice, god dang. Whew. Man, this brake will absolutely suck you but it also sucks that recoil pretty good run only a couple of misses i mean it's not even fair using the eotech and like with this silly brake on it but that was good my heart rate 90 beats per minute it's not bad is this a good gun is this a good ak absolutely is it a thousand dollars good are you going to drop a rack on this thing I don't know. That's what they really have done, they being Zostava, with the price on this thing, just like I said with the M70. The M70 is like 700 bucks, and it's like, shit. You know, that's a little bit on the, the moderate to high side for an AK, but it's a quality AK. So, you know, it's right there. They priced it right at the level where it's a difficult decision. If it were $600, that would be like the go-to AK. There'd be no reason to buy another standard AK when you could just get a Zostava ZPAP for $600. $700 are like, eh, I don't know. But it's still 
fairly priced. Now you can get the standard, not this one, but the standard M85 for $700. Is this worth the extra $300? If we're talking about a UTG rail and like a UTG angled foregrip, and again, I don't know that UTG makes this rail. It's actually tastefully marked Zostiva. I don't know who makes the rail, but a UTG rail is like $50 to $70. I'm sure the AFG is probably no more than $20 or $25. I don't know how much the brake costs, but I'll tell you this, that's a nice brake. And if I got an M85, that's probably the brake I would buy for it. And you've got, this is the big addition, the SB tactical brace and the buffer tube adapter. That's the real catch. Because for me, the regular M85 at $700 is a no-go because there's no stock on it, no way to add a stock to it. If they did one for like $800 and it didn't have the all the shit up here, up on the front end, you just had the SB tactical brace, that would be the way I would go. And then I would just customize the front end myself. You'd probably save money that way because again, we're talking $300 for brake, quad rail, brace, and the buffer tube adapter. I think I could get an M85, pay an extra hundred bucks, like pay 750 or $800. Is that too much to ask to get one with an SB tactical brace, do everything on the front end myself. So again, just like with the ZPAP, we're right at that level where it's like, a fair price. It isn't a bargain and it's not a ripoff. It is right there at a fair price. And I, I can tell that the Zostava guys are proud of their product. They don't want to dilute it by making it too cheap. I totally understand that. I mean, if it were me, maybe I'd price it a little bit more aggressively, but they offer a quality product and I like what they're doing and porting their own stuff, doing the conversions themselves and turning out good product. Guys, thanks a ton for watching. We've got a new sponsor. Top Gun Supply, the online shooting superstore. I've known Tom and Michelle Allen, the owners of Top Gun Supply, for like 15 years. So I'm very proud to have them as sponsors of the program. They're going to be handling our gun giveaways in the future as well. How do you get in on the gun giveaways? Preferably go to subscribestar.com slash TFBTV or patreon.com slash TFBTV. If you're in the five or the $10 tier, you're automatically entered to win a free gun every month. We give away one gun per 500 subscribers. Right now we're just shy of 1,500 supporters. So that means we're giving away two guns, but it's about to be three. So if you wanna support us, but also have a chance at a free gun, please go to Patreon or Subscribestar, sign up and support us. Thank you as usual, of course, to Blue Alpha Gear. They make the best tactical belts you can get. And thank you to Ventura Munitions. Literally the number one top, top ammo store on the planet, I would say. I mean, me, that's just my humble opinion. I'm not biased though. I mean, they've been supporting us since day one, but uh, but yeah, that's my unbiased opinion. Also, my unbiased opinion is that I love you guys. Thanks for watching. See you next week.